Hey everybody, Pastor Steve here. Glad you've joined me for today's devotion. We are in the fifth chapter of John's Gospel. And while you're opening your Bible there, I want to remind you this Sunday is Easter Sunday, so bring someone with you. And uh, it's a great opportunity to invite people who are not yet followers of Christ to worship with us, and they're going to hear the gospel. And I, I want to pray real quick, and then we'll get into the devotion. Father, I thank you that uh, every year on Easter, we get to celebrate the resurrection of Christ and the salvation that's available to all through him. And I pray right now that people will be saved this Sunday, that they will walk the aisle, get on their knees, and pour their heart out to Jesus. I pray, I pray that lost people will be redeemed. And I pray that backslidden disciples would uh, come home. And I pray that you give us opportunities between now and then, not only to pray for people, but to invite people and give us the courage and the love to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, today we are in chapter 5 of John's Gospel, and there's a lot in this chapter we could talk about, a lot of truth. And to be honest, when I read the Gospels, especially uh, Matthew, Luke, and John, the chapters are really long, and so I'm even thinking about the next time uh, we read one of the Gospels, breaking the chapters into, into half or two parts, if you will, so that we take two days to read, just because there's so much. Um, you know, I want to point out one thing theologically or that is a biblical truth for us and then uh, a devotional thought, what God uh, spoke to my heart and used to encourage me. The, the theology is found in the section of uh, verses 18 to 32 that talk about the deity of Christ. And in chapter 5, verse 18, some people were getting mad at Jesus and wanting to kill him because as they understood it, at the end of verse 18, he was making himself equal with God. Now notice that. He was making himself equal with God. Jesus is not a little God. He is God. Jesus did not begin at Bethlehem. He's eternal. He is deity. He is, we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God who exists in three persons, but yet is one. He's not a God who changes forms. All three exist simultaneously. Uh, God who exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God exists as all three simultaneously is what I'm saying. And in these verses, verse 19, for instance, makes it clear that that uh, he and the Father do the same things. Verse 21, that he and the Father both raise the dead. Verse 22, that Jesus judges humanity because that is the Father's plan. Verse 23, Jesus and the Father are and will be equally honored. Verse 26, each are the source of life. And so those are just some of the places where um, the deity of Jesus is affirmed. So I just want to point that out biblically and theologically as truth. Now, what spoke to me, though, is found in verse 24, in particular, where, where uh, uh, Jesus says something about uh, salvation. In verse 24, he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, and does not come into does not come into judgment, or your Bible may say condemnation, but is passed out of death into life. Now I want you to notice what Jesus said happens when someone believes and is saved. He said that person has present tense eternal life. Eternal life doesn't begin after you die. Eternal life begins the very moment you give your heart and life to Jesus. You have eternal life right now if you are in Christ. And he says that person does not come into judgment. God's not going to look at you on the judgment day and weigh everything out and determine if you are saved or lost. That's a settled issue. You don't come into judgment like that, but has present tense right now already passed out of death into life. The moment you gave your heart to Jesus, you moved from being someone who was spiritually dead to being a person who was spiritually alive. That's another facet of being born again or born spiritually, born from above. In that very moment, you ceased to be spiritually dead and became someone who was spiritually alive That in that moment received eternal life. You have eternal life and you are spiritually alive, not spiritually dead. And therefore, God's not going to judge you in the future as to whether or not you are saved. The only judgment for Christians in the future is God evaluating the judgment seat of Christ, the quality of our Christian life. 
our service and whether or not we are worthy of any rewards. Um, and so that's a beautiful passage. And Wednesday, we looked in John chapter 3 and saw something very similar. Uh, another passage that says essentially the same thing is Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And you may want to jot these down. So we have this verse in John 5, 24. Uh, connect it in your Bible. Make a note. Connect it with John uh, chapter 3, verses 18 and 36. John 3, verses 18 and 36. And then connect those also with Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Because in Romans, the apostle Paul says, There is now, right now, present tense, no condemnation, no judgment to those who are in Christ. So I'm not under the judgment of God. I'm not under the condemnation of God because I have Jesus in my life. And at that moment, I became spiritually alive and passed from being dead to alive. I moved from being under the judgment and condemnation of God to no longer being under the judgment and condemnation of God. And that is a, that is a great thing. That is a beautiful truth about salvation that I hope blesses you and fills you with gratitude to live for Jesus as we celebrate this coming Easter. <laughs> wow. What, what, what great, great news. One more thing. Look at verse 40 real quickly as I wrap this up. He, he is speaking to some there in the crowd and, and, and he says, and you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Now listen to that. There were people who heard Jesus and saw Jesus that were unwilling to believe and unwilling to come to him so they could have life, so they could be saved. Listen, brothers and sisters. If there were people who heard Jesus and saw Jesus and still refused to believe and refused to be saved, <laughs> there are going to be people like that today. And all of us know people, we, we pray for them, we care about them, we worry about them. And when they don't get saved, we wonder, well, did the church do something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Did I say? Keep praying, keep witnessing, keep inviting. But listen, sometimes some people don't come to Jesus simply because they don't want to. They choose not to. And there's nothing you can do. You can't, you can't, they, they have free will. Jesus allowed them the free will to say no to him. They still have free will. Now, the great news is that many say yes. We just don't know which ones are going to say yes or when they're going to say yes. So we, we continue witnessing and sharing the gospel. But would you stop beating yourself up when someone you care about says no to Jesus? They, if they say no to Jesus, that's their decision. That's not your fault. So those are the, I guess, three different words I wanted to share with you today. I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning, regular schedule here at First Baptist. All three worship services, all of our life groups as normal, extra chairs out as we celebrate Easter and preach an evangelistic sermon. So bring somebody with you, and then I'll see you Monday with the next devotion.